Welcome everybody to the first episode of the Hoppy Trails Camp Cooking Series. This is a series where we will be going into quite a bit more detail than we do on our Instagram Reels with some of the things that we're cooking, the amazing things we're eating. You can really get into it and see how to make these for yourself. Today we're doing some pinwheel steaks with filet mignon. That's a tenderloin steak. And let's get to it. Oh, we'll stay out late to gastrobate and hang out with our friends. We'll share a few good microbrews, the good times never end. From seaside to the mountains, we'll travel many lands. Eat it up their pub cuisine and hear their local bands. We'll drink it from a bottle in a can or what's on tap. We'll rage brew as we do with fairness on a map. Spirits are up, we'll fill our cup, the wind is in our sails. We'll drink and leave mixed metaphors and travel happy trails. Now what we have here is approximately a three inch thick cut of a prime filet mignon. You can see that beautiful marbling going through it, nice fat there. And here what I'm going to show you is one that I have already, uh, I guess butterfly is not really the best term, but I've taken it and I've cut it open so that it's a long strip. And that's what we're going to do with this right here. So first thing you want to do is get yourself a very sharp knife and you're going to lay this filet on its side and slice down as though you're cutting slices. Don't go all the way through, but get close to the bottom. And then you're going to turn your knife at a 45 degree angle, make a little cut, turn it parallel to the board. And then you want to just start making slices, go from the heel to the tip, slice through, but not all the way through. And as you go, just unroll that steak, make another slice, unroll, make a slice. Don't worry if it's a little bit jagged, a little bit messy. That's not really going to hurt you because you're rolling this all back up. Nobody's going to see it and it won't hurt the finished product. So just keep going, a little slice, unroll, slice, unroll. As you get close to the end, maybe make some shorter, shallower cuts. And there you go. Very easy. Okay. Now you've got a filet that has been unrolled and it's ready to go. Here's the one I did earlier. As you can see, if you cut it at a different thickness, you're going to get a longer strip. End of the day, doesn't matter. Uh, you've got the same amount of meat there. So we're now going to season this with some Himalayan pink salt. Feel free to use whatever salt you want. Just don't use a fine pickling salt. If you're going to use regular, maybe use a kosher, something like that. Then we're going to come in with a cracked pepper. Uh, very lightly, just dust that in there. Remember, this is going to be rolled up, so you're going to end up with a lot more seasoning per bite uh, than you would normally if you're just seasoning the outside. Now, here is the kicker. This is a pomegranate molasses, and that is basically a pomegranate flavored syrup. Um, I'm not sure how they do it if they are just taking pomegranate juice and boiling it down to get that beautiful syrup, but it is really a great flavor. Um, nice and thick, as you can see, like a syrup. Uh, has some good sweetness, but not too much, and uh, really adds quite a bit of flavor that you won't really be able to put your finger on, but you'll definitely know it's there. So make sure you get in there and smooth that around, get a good layer. Uh, you don't want it dripping out too much, but definitely get enough on there so you've got a good coating going all the way down, all the way down your piece of meat there. I'm going to smooth it out, make sure you get the whole surface of the meat. Uh, make sure that you get every little crevice there. You want to get that flavor really in there for every single bite to have that beautiful flavor on it. Um, it's molasses syrup. Uh, I picked it up at the butcher shop where I got the steaks. Uh, you could probably order it online, but it is absolutely amazing. Highly recommended. All right, next we're going to come in here with some sliced provolone cheese. Uh, I got this uh, sliced a little bit thicker than I normally would for a sandwich. Comes in circles, just cut those in half and they lay perfectly down the length here. And uh, I use provolone cheese because it's got a nice nutty flavor and it melts fairly well without getting too drippy, although it will, you know, get a little bit runny as it melts. Uh, something like a mozzarella would get too stringy and be chewy and it would add some decent flavor to it, but not as strong as provolone for the amount of cheese that you use. But I really think provolone is the right cheese to use here. You can maybe use a Havarti, but I'm not sure it would match. Uh, now we're going to come in with some sauteed spinach. So we just did a very, very quick saute on some whole leaf spinach, a little bit of butter, a little bit of garlic. You really don't want to cook it too much because again, these pinwheel steaks, once they're rolled up, you're going to be cooking them again, adding more heat. You don't want the spinach to get too mushy. You just want it to be cooked just enough so it's pliable and you can use it and roll it up without causing yourself any problems or difficulties, just enough that it picks up some of the butter and garlic flavor. So just lay that down the length. It doesn't have to be perfect. Get it in there. Make sure you get some into every bite. All right, now we're going to roll these things up. And really, you just start rolling 
Uh, the provolone cheese has a tendency to want to slide away from the roll, so just make sure you hold it down with your fingers. Go in there and roll, hold, roll, hold, roll. It's really not that complicated. Uh, after you do it one time, you'll you'll have it down. You'll be a pro. Uh, just roll it up, and once you get done, there you go. Just stand it up there, set it on the board, get in and attack the other one. There we do the same process. Just roll, hold the cheese with your fingers as you're rolling. Keep rolling, and uh, before long, you have these two beautifully rolled pinwheel steaks. And let's take a look. There you go. Beautiful. You can see all the different layers. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're really just trying to get all the flavor into each bite. Uh, then you come around, hit it with a little bit of butcher's twine. Don't use something with jute or something with a lot of strings and uh, fibers hanging off. Give it a double wrap before you pull it. That helps it stay a little bit tighter. Get it nice and tight there. Throw another loop on. And there you go. Your pinwheel steak is secure. Now, if you don't want to use the twine, you don't have to. You can probably take a bamboo skewer and just stick it right through there, hold the whole thing together. That's perfectly fine. I have twine. It's something I use quite a bit, so it's not a problem for me, but do whatever works best for you. All right, once that's all nice and tied, I just trim off the ends of the string. You don't have to if you don't want to, but you know, this just keeps the Keeps them from hanging down into the pan, making a mess. Not really a big deal. I just clean them up a little bit real quick. And uh, there you have it. Those are ready to go. Beautiful, beautiful prime pinwheel steaks. Those are going to be absolutely delicious. Next thing we've got to do is get those into a pan. All right, we're going to start this pan off on a little bit of a higher heat so that we can get some good searing on the outside. Wait till it's hot, throw that butter in, get it nice and melted, coat the entire pan. Use more butter than you would think. It's not just to get a coating, uh, but you are going to be spooning some of that over the top of the steak as it cooks. So put more butter in than you'd think, and then get those steaks in there. All right, now before we throw these steaks in there, I'm just going to hit them with a little bit more of that Himalayan pink salt, and then I'm going to put them in the pan salt side down, okay? I'm going to put that salt side down there because we're going to hit the top side with a little bit more salt uh, so that it can be seasoning while the downside cooks. And um, once you start getting that crust, it's a lot harder for the salt to stick and get that seasoning. So that's why we season one side, put it salt side down, and then hit the top side with a little bit more seasoning. And we're just going to let these go until you get a uh, nice little crust on one side. Uh, depending on the temperature that you have in the pan, we're looking at, I don't know, maybe two, maybe three minutes on that first side. Um, you know, if you have your steak at room temperature, it's going to go a little bit quicker. But two to three minutes should be fine on that first side before you flip them over and start putting a brown on the other side. All right, and we are just about to flip these bad boys over here. Uh, so we're just going to grab them. With the tongs here, very easy. They shouldn't stick. Give them a little flip. That one's not quite as brown, not getting as much crust as I would like. This one, definitely a little bit more of that beautiful crust on it there. Uh, make sure that you have your meat centered over the flame. This is a big pan, so that steak wasn't exactly centered. Uh, but then once you get that flip, there you go. Get those bad boys right over that flame. Give it a tip and start spooning some of that delicious butter over the top here. Now that butter is going to have some flavor from the garlic that was on the spinach, obviously a nice buttery flavor, and some of that beautiful rendered fat that is coming out of the uh, amazing prime uh, steak that you have going there. So definitely give it a little spoon over every now and again, maybe 30 seconds, something like that. Then give them another two to three minutes before you flip them over again and let them keep cooking through. Now we're just going to come in here with that spoon, uh, give the pan a tilt. Get some of that delicious butter and just keep spooning that over the top. Uh, that's going to help you with some of that moisture so you're not getting too much moisture loss off the top. Uh, add quite a bit more of that delicious flavor to it. Now when you go to a steakhouse, something that you probably don't realize that separates the steaks that they cook from the steaks that you cook is that at those high-end steakhouses, they are spooning butter over the top, finishing it with butter on top. It adds so much of that delicious flavor and it really just makes a difference on your end game. So we're going to come in here and just give these bad boys a little flip. 
good crusting going on there. You can see some of that provolone is starting to melt in there. And uh, we're just going to give those another maybe two to three minutes. On a thick piece like this, you want to be very careful not to go too high of a heat or you're going to burn the outside and not cook it all the way through. So we reduce the heat down. We add a little bit of a neutral cooking oil so that we can uh, prevent a little bit of that smoking. There is a little bit going on from the butter, the solids, uh, but you do want that neutral oil. That'll help bring up the smoke point a little bit. And then you just flip these bad boys on their side, give them a rotation every, you know, 30 to 45 seconds. Make sure that you're cooking all the way around and uh, they're basically going to be there. So make sure you got your side started because we're going to be moving on to the next steps here pretty darn quick. All right. And here we go with that first rotation. Just give it a 90 degree turn there uh, and look at that. Some beautiful, beautiful crust forming on the outside there. Uh, that is going to be just so much, so much delicious flavor, beautiful uh, Mylard reaction happening there. And just every, you know, 30 seconds or so, give it that quarter turn, that quarter rotation. And pretty soon you'll have that nice, beautiful brown crust going all the way around. All right. And here we go with a, another rotation. As you can see, that beautiful, beautiful brown crust is just really forming all the way around. Uh, don't worry about uh, perfectly even. Uh, you are going to end up with just a beautiful, delicious steak cooked perfectly uh, with that amazing flavor and crust going all the way through. So another 30 seconds or so and give it another rotation. That's going to be about the end of the game in the pan here. All right. And these steaks are done. So we're just going to flip them back onto their end. Get that last bit, little bit of crust just refreshed there. Just get them right there into the oil, into the fat. Turn off that heat. Then we're going to pull these over and get them on a plate. Now, when I cook a steak, I do like to have a little bit of sauteed onion. And with this steak, you don't want anything that's going to be too overpowering. So we're just using a shallot here. Shallots are a little bit milder, a little bit sweeter, but not really as sweet as a sweet onion. But they are very nice. Add some onion flavor and aroma without being too overpowering. So just going to peel that. We're going to slice it pretty thin here because as you can see, we are slicing it against the grain of the onion. That means once it hits that pan, uh, those cell walls are going to be a little bit more broken. It's going to break down a little bit more quickly. So we're going to cut it very thin, saute it very fast, uh, and just get right to it without overcooking. Uh, with a shallot, as uh, you've probably seen, they end up being, you know, oftentimes two uh, bulbs in there. So as you get down, just peel that off. A little bit easier to slice when you're slicing thin on these small pieces. So that's really it. Just slice it up nice and thin, and it's going to end up just cooking really fast, uh, not too much heat in the pan. And uh, like I said, you'll retain a lot of that good texture, a lot of that flavor, a lot of that wonderful aroma, and it's really going to add a nice complement to these pinwheel steaks without being overpowering. All right, now we're going to prepare a little bit of garlic to go in and saute with the onions. As you see, I just turned the knife on the side, press down on it, gives it a little bit of a smash, go through there and give it a rough chop, uh, hit that with both of the cloves that we're going to throw in there. Nice rough chop. It doesn't have to be precise uh, because once we go through it real quick, we are going to turn the knife on its side once again, and we are going to use the blade to press and smear the garlic, break it open a little bit more, and uh, just roughly, well, mangle and manhandle it just to open it up and really get those flavors released, break those cell walls down, and make it nice and easy to uh, saute. And again, the onions are going to go very fast. So we don't want big chunks of raw garlic that end up in there. Break it down, smash it up, get that in, get that garlic flavor. And that's going to be really nice on top of those bin wheel steaks. And once again, we are going to go to a nice hot pan with a lot of butter in it. And we are going to throw in those sliced shallots and that mangled garlic. Get those in there. And, uh, you know, listen, there's a lot of butter in this recipe. There's a lot of fat. This is not diet food. This is delicious food. Don't eat this three meals a day. But if you're going to do it, do it right, right? Don't skimp and wish you'd added more butter later. Just get in there, stir it around. You're going to be glad you did. So as you can see, we're keeping everything moving here. We don't want the garlic. We don't want the onions to burn. We just want them to start to sweat a little bit. Break down those cell walls just a touch. Release that flavor while maintaining some of that texture. And you just want to keep it moving. That way you're not going to have anything burn. And uh, very quickly, these are going to be done. And here we are starting to get some of that beautiful color. You can see that the they're not brown, so to speak. They're getting a little bit more golden in color. Uh, if you could be here, you could really smell that aroma, that garlic, the onion coming off. 
Um, these are getting very close to done, so we're just going to give them a little toss like that. Nice, easy. Toss them around. Make sure we get good, even cooking throughout. And then we're just going to come in and hit these with a little bit more of that Himalayan pink salt just to add a little bit of seasoning. Um, and then these are going to be ready. We're going to pull them off, put them aside, and have them ready to go when we start to plate this meal. And uh, we'll move on to the next task. All right, and now we are coming up to an essential but often overlooked part of cooking any meal, and that is the mid-cook cocktail. We are coming in with an Irish whiskey here. I'm using Jameson, but you can really use whatever you want, uh, about 250 mils. Then we're going to come in with the juice of one lime. Uh, you can use whatever you want, squeeze it by hand, but realistically, these little hand juicers like this are the best way to get all the juice out of there without messing around with seeds or anything like that. So really get in there juice that lime, get it in, that's where you're going to get some of the acid. And after this, we're going to come in with the third and final ingredient on this very simple little cocktail, and that is going to be a lime syrup that we made. Uh, we chopped up a bunch of limes, and we just covered them in brown sugar. And then you put them aside, let them sit, come back, muddle them up a little bit to release some of that juice, get them back into the fridge covered, and there you go. You've got a beautiful syrup that is sweet, it's got a little bit of kind of caramel flavors to it. Uh, definitely plenty of lime, some sweetness. Two tablespoons will do it for you. Just stir that in there and, um, you know, that's it. Come in with your shot glasses, give it a little pour. You can see two shot glasses there because uh, I don't cook alone. I've got my sous chef. Her hands are not on the meal, but uh, it's very important. She's there for moral support and uh, who wants a drink alone, really? So there it is. Cheers. Bottoms up. And now we can get back to cooking. All right, now it is time to plate. We are going to start with a roasted mashed cauliflower that we'll show you how to cook in another video. Uh, basically, it is roasted cauliflower that is then smashed, uh, similar to how you'd do with a mashed potato, but with a much thicker consistency. It's got a good, stable base. Uh, I say my assistant chef doesn't put her hands on the food, but realistically, she made these. She's a better cook than I am, but uh, <laughs> we won't get into that on this video. So you lay down a nice bed of the roasted smashed cauliflower and on top of that we are going to lay just a few spears of asparagus that were also roasted in the oven very easy you can do these in a pan if you want to uh, i don't recommend doing them in a microwave they get very mushy and stringy and not really such a great texture uh, you do want to do them so they're a little bit al dente if you will uh you know i guess a pasta term but uh you'll understand when you cook them and uh, then there you go. Just come in, lay that pinwheel steak right down next to him. Doesn't that look beautiful? Make sure you remember to snip that string off that was holding it together. It's not needed anymore and you don't want anybody to get a mouthful of string. Not very appetizing. Then you're going to come in with some more of that pomegranate syrup and just run that around the edge of the plate there just like that. That way, if you want to get a little extra dip, you've got that flavor there for you. Uh, come in with the sauteed onions and garlic and you know try to be a little more graceful than i am here so you're not just shaking your tongs around looking foolish uh get that on there and then there's nothing left to do but to cut into this bad boy and see what we've got it is very tender uh that prime filet um the only reason i'm having resistance because it's pushing down into those <laughs> roasted cauliflower there but you know get a little bit of that onion and garlic on there and again try to you know be a little more graceful than i am and uh, give it a bite and see what you've got there. It's a wonderful combination of flavors, and really you can't go wrong. Very easy. It'll impress any of your guests, and uh, it's delicious. Make one just for yourself. You've probably earned it. And there you have it, the first episode of Hoppy Trails Trail Cooking. Uh, filet mignon pinwheel steaks, pretty easy to do. Uh, give us a comment. Let us know what you thought about the video. Let us know what you thought about the recipe, what you'd like to see next, and hopefully there will be a lot more to come. And remember, Always say yes to the hoppy ending. Cheers. The preceding podcast was produced by Sequoia Productions, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved. If you enjoyed this show and you're looking for more, or even if you're looking for something a little different, check out the other amazing shows by Sequoia Productions wherever you get your podcasts or on sequoia.com. Hoppy trails to brew Until we drink again Hoppy trails to brew Keep sharing with your friends 
Who cares about which IPA tastes better? ABV are just a couple letters Our betrayals to bruise Until we ink again 